Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome to the Hot Pole Podcast. Happy New Year, everybody. We're back. Happy New Year. Happy Year. <laughs> yes. I'm Adam Steele, your host for the Music Tech Podcast with computery stuff thrown in. And as always, is my co host, Liam Wright. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm Ree. How are you? I'm. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the king in the north from Game of Thrones with that. But with an Xbox t shirt on. Yeah. Real king in the north, and I. It's very cold, and mm. I decided I don't care. I'm wearing a dressing gown because it's warm. Fair. Whew. I'm drinking an old fashioned because I need it because I've had a hell of a week. Uh, wife has had the positive symptoms of the thing, um, which I'm not going to use the word for because of the algorithm. But she got the thing, so Not I've good. been yes. Uh, she's okay. She's fine. Well, she's recovering now. It's like a bad flu. But it means that I've been uh, doing all the uh, childcare stuff as well. So, cheers. Mm. Oh, so yeah. In need of a drink. And well deserved, no doubt. Oh, I certainly hope so. Cheers. But yes, um, it's been quite the week because as well as that happening... uh, all the companies in the world seem to be back to work all at the same time. So all the emails I've been sending over Christmas, because I've had the spare time. Uh, now I'm getting all the replies in one big whoomph. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of really interesting stuff now on the horizon, which is really fascinating. Ooh. Ooh, indeed. Ooh. Yes. Uh, why on earth am I getting uh, red stuff from OBS? It's telling me... It's not happy, but it's fine. Oh, it's just moaning. Oh, it's higher than the recommended bitrate. Ah, oh, it's fine. <laughs> Caution, your video quality is gooder than we like. <laughs> it's too good. It's too good. But yes, how's your uh, back to work been? And how was your Christmas? All right. Yeah, all right. Um, semi-chilled. I'm, you, uh... you got more coffee. Got more coffee. And you got a way got, to got a crush the coffee. Yeah, you got a way to crush the coffee better. Yeah, better grinder. It's really funny because the the guy from Flair, um, when I messaged him saying that my uh, my Flair wasn't working, he was like, "Nah, you just you, your coffee's crap." In a, in a nicer way. Yeah, and I was like, "Yes, yes, I realized this myself." <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, had some very nice coffees and uh, pretty chilled, good sort of period off, and then New Year's resolutions to. Uh, do better things i've done lots of reading and stuff which is good like reading reading like um productivity books and just not but not just like you know kind of let's just give the man more time but more of a like making your your life better sort of stuff better Mm. habits and things so uh because i know you're obviously gymming it a lot at the moment Mm. good habit things you say that i've not been in a week because of the thing well, yeah. But. but yes, generally, yes, that's absolutely right. I've been trying to self-improve in a very direct way. And it's it's kind of helping because maybe that's why I feel in good health despite the thing. Because I, I currently don't have the thing, but if I do, <laughs> insert meme here. <laughs> mm. so, uh, so yeah, Ooh. so that's been fun. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm... And I realized that I'd taken 10 days off in the entirety of 2021. I'm uh, going to make sure that that doesn't happen again this year because that's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's got to be at most five. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. it's far too much time off. <laughs> Plah. Yeah, I- I'm not sure if I've had a full... Oh, no, I had two full days off because I was sick a few months back. But I generally <laughs> at least reply to emails because I'm a masochist. So yeah, I should also not do that because it, it's it's not healthy. Um, yeah, time off is good, and we're we're absolute masochists for for not doing that. Mm. But yes, I got lots of alcohol and chocolate for Christmas, and that has Me, all been consumed. This book, Al. Oh, oh Al <laughs> says yeah. Dave Grohl, Dave Grohl's book, The Storyteller. For those on the podcast version, the audio only version. Yes. Did I get any books? I don't think I've got any books. I uh, oh, what was I reading? I don't know. What planet am I on? Who are you? <laughs> Who um, are you? But yes, I've been learning to code again because I'm still working with the Dynamount. I I need to get that automated. That's on my to do list. 
but yes, I've been working on some very new and interesting things to do with cabinets and IRs and all that kind of stuff, as is the thing that I like to do. Everybody kind of knows that about me by now, so that's no secret. Mm. But the question is, with who? And also, we, we had a bit of a joke this week that we're finally getting into working with NFTs, but specifically non-functional tea holders. That is to say, our mugs, the Hot Pole Studios mugs, they are real, they are physical, they are tangible. And it, it doesn't cost as much to mint one of these as it does a digital thing. Uh, it probably costs way more. Really? Yeah, I mean, min minting an NFT um, yourself, I mean, I mint, you can mint them for free, essentially, depending on which blockchain. If you're making them, you then resell them for more. Okay. Well, yeah, it doesn't cost much to mint it. You know a lot more about that than I do, for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I know the whole total of zero about them because I've avoided them like the plague. But uh, I have a mug, and it's a Hop Pole Studios mug. And so we're going to be putting them on at some point. How Do you know how close we are to getting those so people can buy them? Uh, we just need to get the postage sorted. Ah. That's the only thing. Then that's then something can... we shall do. Yeah, I mean, get, getting them on the site is super easy. It's not a problem. Yes. So that that's something we're going to be doing very soon. We have boxes of them. And so I'm going to send a few out to uh, the brands that have sent me stuff like T-shirts. It's fair as fair. But then they'll be on the store for everybody to, to go and get get your hands on. Although, fair play to anybody. If you've got a brand and you send me a T-shirt, I'll send you a mug. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> But yes, uh, it's been two weeks since we've seen everybody because of the timing of the New Year Christmas thing. So there is actually some news. Shall we talk about it? Let's do the news. The news! There we go. The, uh, is it me or is the, uh, the chat not particularly uh, opaque? Or not particularly the, the other way? The uh, it's not particularly. But there's a box. It's there's a box in the bottom right. That's what it is. A box in the bottom. No, it's just not particularly transparent. Weird. Not that that. It no, looks I'm, like there's a I'm, box. I'm moving it round. There's no box. No, if you look on the right, look yeah. where the the white line goes yeah. across. That's way higher than it is on the further down. Uh, that's only because the uh, the actual window is a weird oh, right. shape, uh, which is also a thing. So I think that's all it was. Okay, maybe it's all in my head. Who knows? But yes. Unless that grey box that's around it wasn't usually there. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. But anyway. Um, who cares? Yes, who cares? News article. Light up guitar. I want one. And it's made by Samsung. The Samsung C Lab Zamstar guitar system. Now, this might seem a little bit weird to people who are in the guitar industry. Samsung, Samsung, the people who make TVs, making guitars. But yes, no, really. Um, it makes sense to me because a few years back, and I'll just pull up a different news article very quickly. Uh, the uh, people at Samsung bought the Harman Group. We might have even reported on this in the early days of the podcast, because this is four years ago. Uh, Harman are the people who own AKG, Lexicon, JBL, Digitech, DBX, Soundcraft, and more. And so Samsung own all of that now. So all the technologies that they have from all these companies, they can just call up their offices and go, you, what do you have? Put it in a guitar. Thanks. <laughs> so... It kind of makes sense a few years down the line that they'd now start pushing uh, stuff under their brand that is already well known. Hmm. Chris says, yeah, but does it gent? <coughs> I believe it could if you wanted it to. But the thing that really fascinates me is I think this is one of those guitars. This has been announced at CES, so this is ongoing CES. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like it's one of those where there are six LEDs for the six strings on every fret. And they light up appropriately so that you've got some sort of like flight path for your fingers, I guess. If that teams up properly with very little latency, 
I can see that being really useful for people who are learning how to play guitar and really distracting for people who already play. So that mm. could be fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ooh, um, Tuba says, uh, hi, greetings from Northern Germany. Hello from Northern England. Mm. Yes. The North remembers. Yes, indeed. Um, earlier in the chat, just before we started, uh, Danny said, hello from the great white frozen North. Mm-hmm. And of course, I said hello from the small slushy white Northwest because it, it, <laughs> it, it snowed a little bit today and now it's... It did. Now it's not. But yeah, we're in that kind of... The weather's going... <laughs> With snow rather than uh, just to to use a couple of sound effects there. But yes, Samsung C Lab. No idea how much that's going to cost, but if it's if it's got six times twenty one or twenty two LEDs, that's a fair few. Mm-hmm. And unless they mass produce this to death, uh, that's going to make it relatively expensive or really really bad guitar because they'll have to cut corners in other places. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm all for affordability, but I'd hope they don't cut too many corners here and make it an absolute sack of cack because Mm -hmm. that will put people off more than it will attract people with the cool system, or at least the people who buy it will realize a a poor guitar can fight you and stop you learning. So Mm -hmm. hopefully they turn out okay. But of course, CES means that uh, it's been announced CES began yesterday and is going on for the next few days. Uh, it be interesting to see what tech comes out and probably on next week's podcast we'll see more uh, news roundup. Uh, but for now, yeah, that's our headline of tech so far from CES. And more will come, I'm sure of it. Because um, the guys are uh, Gear News, where we get a lot of our news, are... Uh, Reporting back from CES right now. So, how does Rocksmith work? Um, you get a USB audio to digital converter, and it listens to the audio, and it's like pitch detection. Oh wow! Yeah, Rocksmith was pretty cool, but for some reason it just didn't catch on the way it should have because it was really clever. It's still going. Hmm. Rocksmith Plus. All oh, right. It's like a, a monthly subscription thing you can get for it. Because, of course, it's monthly subscription because everything's monthly subscription. <laughs> it just made me think of it with, like, you know, that learn to play the easy way LEDs play together. It made me think of Rocksmith, which, because you can use that to learn how to play guitar. Yeah. Well, you can pick up option. sustain and stuff. This is weird. Hmm. Hmm. I just don't know why I've never actually really looked into how it works. Yeah, it's really clever because it's doing pitch detection. It knows that the note's still going, so it can detect all sorts of clever stuff. Yeah, oh, very, very, very clever indeed. But yeah, that's a thing. So a thing to plug your shiny guitar into is Royer's new box, the Royer D Booster Two. D Booster. D Booster. Why do you want a D Booster? Because it does de boost. Oh, it does de boost. It doesn't de boost it. No, it does de boost. <laughs> uh, I say, why do you want to de-, de boost it? Yeah, it's kind of a, a translation error. It should be de booster. Oh, de b booster. Ah, yes. <laughs> there we go. We both missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so, loads of companies are doing things like they're the Triton Fet Head or the Cloud Lifter that bring up the level. Roya are really good at doing stuff that is the, super duper high quality versions. The one that you, you told me to get, the Sub Zero. Oh yeah, the that'll be the gear for music equivalent. Yeah. But yeah, Roya makes stuff that is made out of like, you know, really, really it's made out of tanks. You know, that mm-hmm. old cliche. But here's the interesting thing is that this is the new two channel one. It's also got a DI instead. So instead of plugging your microphone in and it being a louder microphone, you can plug a guitar straight in and it becomes mm. a DI box. And if it's a particularly quiet guitar, it can boost that by 8 dB. Very nice. Very clever. Uh, I actually think that even though this is not cheap, 299 US dollars, uh, that is a lot of money. But the fact that it doubles up as a dual DI box or a microphone enhancing lifting thing, Mm -hmm. that gives it more functionality. And that starts to justify more of a price, although that is still a lot of money. Mm Mm-hmm. 
that's the kind of thing where extra functionality means you know you never know where you're going to need something like this if it's permanent installation and you're only going to use it for one thing this may not be the right answer but if it's kind of a swiss army knife and you just go in the middle of a studio session they go i know exactly what i need grab that's mm-hmm. that's the kind of tool that i think that's useful for but yeah, they've. Um, I remember talking to him about the D booster when we were at Nam a couple of years back, mm-hmm. and the the last actual in person Nam, uh, Windsor Nam, and they said the D booster one, which they had at the time, uh, was designed specifically for like the SM fifty seven and their one two one ribbon, so it was mm-hmm. designed for the classics. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's uh, there's some good stuff to be had from Royo. They know what they're doing. So, moving on. Moving on. Yeah, MXR have made the new pedal called the Poly Blue Octave. Now, anyone who's a bit of a pedal nerd will have heard of the MXR Blue Box, which mm-hmm. was a pedal that they used to make. I uh, don't know if they still make it, but it was an octave pedal. It was a very early octave pedal, and mm-hmm. it was terrible. It was really bad. The tracking was really bad. The sound was weird. And you could get some really cool sounds out of it because it wasn't very good. It was Mm -hmm. one of those things where it didn't exactly do what it was supposed to do, but what it did do was wicked. Mm -hmm. And, you know, happy accidents and all that kind of thing. So MXR's, it was just called the Blue Box. And it was one of those things that if as a guitarist you knew what a Blue Box was, there's a chance you probably owned one at some point. But otherwise, if you've not heard of it, you're just like, meh. But this mm-hmm. is MXR's new stab at what I would call a proper, a, a proper octave, where it's got uh, two octaves up and two octaves down. Uh, so it's more like an electroharmonics pog. So you've okay. got a, you've got a choice of having that. It's that big white stripes kind of sound, mm-hmm. uh, where you know when there's the single note white stripes stuff, but there's loads and loads of octaves going on. Mm-hmm. It'll be not this, but the electroharmonics version of this. But it's right. got it's got fuzz in built as well, so you can absolutely go mental with a massive sound out of a single box. Mm. Mm. So yeah. Oh, in, in monophonic mode, it provides swirls and swooshes that sound like the phase ninety, apparently. That's weird. And yeah. yeah. I like the sound of that. But yeah, $199, so I'll probably end up getting one of these secondhand at some point. <laughs> mm. But yeah, there you go. That's a thing. Now, Legit. yeah, you like tube screamers? You like green tube screamers? Tough. The 40th anniversary one is red. <laughs> That's the news article. It's shiny and it's red. Probably sounds the same, but it's red. If you're <laughs> a tube screamer nut... Uh, it's made in Japan, uh, and it's red. Moving on. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was that news article, but it needed saying. Tube Screamer's a Tube Screamer. They're good. They do a good thing. It's red. <laughs> this one's really interesting. The fr- the Framework laptop, now in stock and available for order. Oh, yeah. I remember we talked about this a while back. Yeah, we talked about the concept of it and how uh, all the bits are user-replaceable by design. Yeah, wasn't it that they they'd sold out? It was there was a whole supply chain issue conversation we had about this one. Yeah, they they were cool, but you couldn't get them. That kind of yeah. thing. So apparently now you can get them. Uh, they're in stock in places, and you can actually go and buy one. So the idea, and it's it's well illustrated in this picture, is that there are sockets on the sides where you can have extra USB ports or SD card slots or HDMI outputs or Actually, an extra SSD can go in that slot, so it's really versatile. Mm-hmm. Mm. But also, it's designed inside so that if any of it breaks, anything, literally anything on the machine, if any of it breaks, you can take it apart and take mm-hmm. out that bit really easy and get a new one. Yeah. That's a big deal because as laptops get smaller and thinner and smaller and thinner and smaller and thinner and they still want a 300-hour battery life out of it, something's got to give. And so the way they've been tending to do it recently is they'll have one tiny little strip of a motherboard with everything soldered on, which removes 
things that would take up space like sockets and ribbon connectors and which is fine for some people i guess but some companies like as a good example apple i think have gone too far down that road to the point where if any single thing breaks now you're in a lot of trouble and yeah at best you can take it to a specialist repair center but likely it's just broke Whereas with these, it's completely... I mean, uh, to the point where, when you open them, there are actually instructions on each piece of everything in there saying, this is the battery, this is how you take out the RAM, this is where the screws are, etc. Inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's future-proof, like Chris says. What? Um, so what's the... Is it USB-C? Like Thunderbolt, basically, everything's attached to? I don't know. I'm guessing it it's a PCI like Express... Uh, bus towards the things. Yeah, uh, that's my guess, because it would make no sense to have. Yeah, well, it would be. Yeah, I guess it would have to be Thunderbolt because it's there's HDMI by USB three point two. Oh right, yeah. So it okay. Thank you. Yeah, USB three point two. Uh, so there's HDMI and DisplayPort over USB C. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess that works. I've actually seen external HDMI dongles that work perfectly well. Just don't expect yeah. crazy hardware yeah, acceleration. Out. I'm, I'm not sure what you can get up to. I'm like pretty sure you can't do 4K60 on it, for instance. Yeah. Although USB 3.2, if that's what I'm thinking, that's 10 gigabit. That's plenty of bandwidth for that kind of thing. Mm. It's only when you start getting above 4K60, I think, that you really start to run into bandwidth limitation issues. Don't quote me on that. It could be 18 gigabit per second for that. Uh, Yeah, my memory fails me at this point. But the idea between these replaceable bits and all the replaceable insides as well, I think is huge. Because, I mean, my little laptop that I've got here, I mean, it's got three USB-A sockets on, which is fine. But let's say one of them gets broken through repetitive use, through an accident, through anything. That puts then out of action for the rest of its life, unless I start getting the soldering iron out and really get picky. With something like this, you just go, oh, take it out, put a new one in. And yeah, I mean, the DIY spec model starting at $750. I'm going to be looking quite closely at this. I'm... Not going to be buying one of these in the next couple of weeks, let's say. But at some point in the next year or so, I'm probably going to be starting to cast my eye over this. This is the kind of thing, if they can be specced with even a half-decent GPU in them, and I don't know if that's a possibility right now, but I'm going to say that maybe if it isn't another generation could be, who knows? Mm -hmm. That's something I could absolutely invest in because of all the uh, you know all the replaceable stuff all the build it yourself modular upgradable all that kind of stuff so, uh, so i guess given that it is modular that it would take advantage of all the, the different ways of, of doing things and just reading here um usb 3.2 can do um display port alt mode what's that um which basically allows it to be able to do 4K60, no problem at all. Huh. It basically runs it like a DisplayPort cable. That's clever. I mean, that's that's almost Thunderbolt, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's, it's Intel XE graphics, which is probably okay, but not kind of video editing spec. Mm-hmm. But if they do anything like this with even a mid-spec... NVIDIA or AMD graphics solution at any point, I'm probably just going to jump on it. When we went away with uh, Mickey's family over the holiday, I had to take what is now her laptop with me, which is the one that I used to edit on. Um, because that was the oh, only... Oh, that's where I've seen it. Sorry. Linus yeah, Danny said Li- Li- yeah, Linus uh, bought shares in the company. Yes. Yeah, I remember, I remember him doing the video... Um, on this fairly mm. recently, I think it was. Yeah, and it yeah. was him. Sorry, it wasn't us talking about it. I'm just assuming that we're Linus now. No, we did. Um, it was him that was talking about all the issues with supply chains 
Um, right. And the, the we, we talked about the laptop itself, but we didn't yeah. talk about the supply chain stuff. Uh, no, that was just me just daydreaming that I'm sat next to Linus having a chat. Yeah. <laughs> Mark says, so this could be used as a tracking machine. I mean, in theory, it, it would probably be a little noisy for a tracking machine if I was using plugins, but never say never, you know. Can you get a firewire dongle is one of the things. <laughs> There was there was someone there was someone complaining in the YouTube comments section this week. Oh, sorry, no, it was on it was on a Facebook post that Focusrite had put out saying like, "How dare you stop supporting my Liquid Sapphire Fifty Six interface?" I was like, <laughs> "Look, dude, that's a FireWire interface. Even Apple stopped putting FireWire in their machines a Did decade ago." Um, no, they didn't. Um, they were a really, really big uh, proponent of it. They really, yeah. yeah, they were a big force behind it originally. Uh, so y I can see why you would think they made it, but that's just the Firewire. I think was an Apple brand, but the actual technology was called <gasps> IEEE one three nine four A, which is not a very uh, marketable name. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually really cool technology, uh, but it kind of died as Thunderbolt replaced it because it was better in every way. Mm -hmm. And so everybody stopped supporting it when Apple stopped putting it in things. And that was nearly a decade ago. And this guy's like, oh, why have you stopped supporting this thing? It's like, well, if the guys who make the computers won't touch it with a 10-foot pole and Focusrite then stopped making those devices that do that years ago... Mm -hmm. What what you what you expecting? Mm -hmm. In their day, they were great. That day has passed. That ship has mm -hmm. sailed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I digress. I I kind of want one of these, and I wonder why it's two hundred and fifty pounds or dollars cheaper as a DIY method. I wonder what that's all about. Oh boy, 8 terabytes of storage and 64 gig of RAM. I mean, if it had a decent graphics card in, sign me up. Mm. My desktop's barely got more storage than that, and I edit 6K video for a living. Mm -hmm. mm. But yeah, um, oh, it's on 11th gen Intel stuff anyway. Nope, moving on. <laughs> Intel 11th gen stuff is going to be uh, in the trash bin very soon. Um, the 11th gen was a running joke in the industry because it only came out six to eight months ago and has already been buried uh, mm -hmm. because it was terrible. Ooh, a spam bot in chat. Would one of the mods do the honours? Cheers. So, um, this is an, a little uh, news article about an, a DSer, uh, which is like, oh, a DSer, who cares? Uh, mm -hmm. But it came out this week or last week. I got it because it's part of the uh, Plugin Alliance Mix Master Bundle. Tried it. Mm -hmm. Really impressed. Sounds really good. Did it remove your S's? Uh, yes, but it doesn't make you sound like you've got no teeth. <laughs> Not unless you really, really, really turn it up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but in, So this is the Lindell 902, which is a complete rip-off of an old DBX DSer. And I was so impressed with this plugin this week. I nearly pulled the trigger on buying a hardware 500 series version of this. The actual DBX uh, compressor, I think it was called the 520. I'm just going to look. DBX 520? Yeah, DBX 520 DSer, I did remember correctly. Uh, you can get them from Gear for Music for £149 right now. And I've been thinking more and more and more about getting an entire vocal chain that's in hardware so I can just plug in and just speak or sing and it's just done. Uh but I, I held off because that's a lot of money for something that I, I literally have right here. <laughs> and the CPU penalty is almost nothing. So, yeah, it's got a few switches. It's got um, DSs either duck the entire signal or they can just take the high frequencies out. Mark says, how does it compare to Sibilance, which is the Waves plugin? Don't know. Haven't really used Sibilance because I've been using the, the classic Waves DSer for the longest time because it does what I want really well. And then I've stopped using that for a while and used the Aosis one, which is complete overkill. 
and this one is actually kind of nice. It shows me what's happening and where the the S's are being ducked and by how much. Uh, you can pick a particular frequency. Um, I've been using it on less than what they call the normal range, which is good that they actually give you an indication of you should be using it here, otherwise you might be killing it. <laughs> and it's also got a thing that I really like, which is the air control, which means like if you feel like it's taking a bit too much top end out the whole vocal, you can turn that up and you get a little bit of top end back, which is nice, because then you're not having to put more EQs in the chain. So yeah, if you're considering the Plugin Alliance uh, bundle or you want to just go and buy it, it's pretty good. So yeah, there you go. It even gives you a, a control of how much it's taken out in terms of LEDs. Um, I've been using it quite gently and making sure I don't overly push the high end on my vocals, but if, if you want a super, super bright poppy vocal, this might be the cure. But there you go. Sounds if, good. Yeah. If you use something like Soothe instead of a DS, or it can be a little too much and it can take all the teeth out of a uh, a vocal, so to speak. So this might be the answer of giving you the pronunciation without the <laughs> kind of stuff. So there yeah, we don't want to lose the teeth. Oh, did your Steam Deck ever come, by the way? Steam Deck? Didn't you order a Steam Deck? Oh, um, I pre-ordered it. I've not seen anything about it since. Um, oh, it's still not out yet? Oh, yeah, after Q2. Yeah, they're, they're just, yeah. no, they, they pushed it back and back. But right. yeah, I'm sure I'll get an email or a message about it saying, give us the rest of the money. Or we'll get an email saying, we took the rest of the money. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that'll be on its way at some point. That's because we were talking, weren't we, about uh, just that, because the modular computer and uh, whether you can uh, track with it, we were saying totally need to track on the uh, Steam Deck. mm Absolutely. Well, by the time that that gets here, then I will have something that I absolutely cannot tell you all about, which I'm very excited <laughs> about to put the two together and create a super fusion, super Saiyan, ridiculous portable recording setup. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. So there you go. Last but not least, because nothing happened from the, the lovely Behringer this week. This struck me as being really weird. This is the GC Audio Inherit. This is a modular analog preamp. Right. It's huge. It's like a two-unit rack, and it's got a thing in the middle that's kind of like Lego, where you stick a preamp in it. So it's kind of like 500 series stuff, but mm -hmm. bigger and chunkier and higher voltage and scary. And I think it's really silly. Mm -hmm. But there you go. And I think it's silly, not because I think it's going to be bad. I think it's going to be great. But... I tend to buy things like nice preamps to do a thing and then I don't want to have to remove it to put another option in. Right. I don't want to have four choices of which I can only use one. I want to have four choices of which I can use all four. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's an idea. Uh, there's like a Neve version that's called, called the RE73. In these little kind of blocks that they stick in, it's got like proper Carnhill transformers and basically a Neve preamp or a high voltage tube based system or an SSL 4000 series style or RE98, which I'm not entirely sure what that's copying, but it might be API. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And they're all there and it's not going to be cheap. So if you want to buy the chassis, the two unit chassis that they come in and all four of the cartridges, that's three and a half thousand euros. Mm. Woo. Uh, yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. Still. I mean, it's boutique stuff, so that's kind of boutique pricing, but with the best will in the world, guys, nah, I'm good. Because <laughs> just woof. Yeah. Mm. It better be really, 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 really good for that kind of money. Mm. Hello, everybody. Hello, Emotion in chat. Everybody, uh, welcome our new viewers. So, yes, Ooh. that was Zen News. Man, I'm re really looking forward to the framework stuff being six months from now when they get the 12th gen Intel stuff in there. <laughs> but yeah, this yeah. box behind me has been waiting like Chekhov's gun for the entire uh, of this uh, podcast. I got some stuff and I don't even remember what's in it. I opened it oh, just right. before the podcast. And I'm not saying that for dramatic effect. I generally 
don't remember. But what happened was, oh, so that's one thing that I've got. A mesh head for the uh, for the snare for the Joe Becky. Either that, or, either that, or it's a really big pop filter, <laughs> so that you know, no matter where I go, I can absolutely uh, pa 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 pa. <laughs> okay. Uh, or if I'm feeling particularly uh, clumsy, an even bigger one. <laughs> Now that's what I call a pop filter. <laughs> now that's a pop filter. Yes. So that's a twenty. That's a knife. Now that's a knife. <laughs> yeah. That's our. That's that's going on with the Joe Becky kick drum that we have. The trigger that's inside the Joe Becky is completely destroyed. But I have been on Joe Becky's website and they now have the version three version of the trigger, which you can buy separately. So I'm going to do that and put that in there, and we're going to resurrect the uh, the electronic drum kit. Um, I was saying to Liam just before Christmas, um, I've decided that I'm going to be covering a Pendulum song at some point. And doing drum and bass drums, going to need some samples. So why not uh, Why not have uh, an entirely electronic kit? Because we have one. Let's do it. <laughs> mm. But uh, the song that I'm thinking of doing is called Showdown, and it's got a real kit on there and an electronic kit over the top. Mm -hmm. So I can record them separately, and that's going to take me hours, days. It's going to kill me, and it's going to be great. Mm. Ooh. Sounds good to me. Thank you for the super chat there. Big shout out to you, and thank you. You helped me get my DAW3 OBS for live streaming. No problem. You're welcome, and thank you very much. What else is in this box? Oh, oh that's what the weight is. Symbol stand. I realised I don't have enough symbol stands. Uh, I was tracking uh, this week, and I realised that symbol stands I also use as like tom holder stands, because I never like where toms mount to kick drums and that kind of thing. I always think they're in stupid mm -hmm. places. So mm -hmm. I realised they didn't. They weigh a ton, which is good, because they're supposed to. I got these funky little things. Um, symbol optimizers. Ooh. Yes. What the hell's that? Uh, so, what I found is, they're kind of like a hard felt, uh, but in different thicknesses and different widths. And the okay. idea is, when you hit symbols in a studio context... Quite often, they ring for just that bit too long and they've got a kind of a horrible wong on the underneath and you've got to fight mm -hmm. that and EQ it and uh, do things with the overheads that you don't want to do as a compromise. And mm -hmm. what these do is they absorb a little bit of energy from the center of the cymbal, which takes that low-end sound out a little bit and helps dampen them down, but not like grabbing it and just kind of going wong it just over time just shortens the attacks a little bit mm -hmm. and so i found out about them and i was like hey i'm gonna try that so this is the starter pack uh so there's one there's a specific one for the ride which feels harder than the others there's a hi-hat seat which stops your hi-hat washing around and right. also does a little bit of that so it's a bit of a tighter sound so i thought okay. i'd try them and the other thing that i got which is perfect timing, is a little Manfrotto, little floor tripod type thing. So it's 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 just, right. yeah. So it's a fluid ball head tripod, but I can put mm -hmm. it literally on the ground, hmm. uh, or a table or whatever, uh, which means I've got more camera options in hmm. terms of where I can put them because I can I can now put them lower or higher mm -hmm. or in discrete places. Yeah, uh, perfect timing because hopefully. If I, you know, test negative and and I'm healthy this week, I am planning on coming to the studio to record my parts of a cover of Tom Sawyer by Rush, which is difficult. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Cameron Fleury, who is a Canadian drummer, has now mm -hmm. tracked his drum parts for that and has sent them over to me. Okay. And they sound fantastic. So Ooh. I now have the unenviable task, uh, which I have put upon myself because I'm an idiot, of uh, recording the bass, the vocals, the keyboards, and the foot keyboards all in one take. All at the same time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
it's uh, it's a lot. And that's mm-hmm. why Geddy Lee from Rush is a genius, because he literally just does all of it. And you're just like, how? How How do you? <laughs> how? So that's what I'm going to try and do. Uh, <laughs> so to capture all of that, I need lots of cameras. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, how are you going to prove that you did all this stuff? <laughs> yeah. So I've got the Blackmagic 6K. I've got a GH5S, which can film in RAW now because of the magic screen thing. Um, I've got two iPhones, a slightly broken one and my new one, which is less broken. Mm -hmm. But just because this one's kind of broken, this is the old one. Uh, Look at that big line down the screen. That's horrible. Oh, wow. Yeah, but uh, that means I can't get any money for it because it's broke. But the Mm -hmm. camera still works. Mm-hmm. So I'll be using the camera on it uh, on a close source of some kind. Yeah. And also I've got the DJI Pocket Gimbal thing, which can go on something. Mm-hmm. And I've got a GoPro, which will be attaching to the headstock of the base, so you can see right down the barrel as I'm playing. <laughs> so, yeah. And if I film them all live and I have them all on the screen at the same time, then you can see that I did it all live and be like, this guy's insane. <laughs> That's the idea. And like then, it. and then Jamie Humphreys from Six String Alliance is going to do live takes of the guitar parts on top of that, and then mm-hmm. I mix it and we get it out, and then we show everyone, and most people will be like, "eh," and the Rush fans will be like, "oh yeah," <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, and yeah, big thanks to the guys at URM uh, because I've been working with them uh, all of last year, and they to say thank you sent me a a thing i could use with toman which is why i bought all these extra little things so mm-hmm. that was courtesy of them so thank you very much cheers nice. merry christmas and happy new year and the same to all of you everybody indeed uh danny says just helps choke the bell sound uh no i mean i'm supp- i suppose it would choke the bell sound a little bit but also It'll just start to dampen the mass from the center, I guess, and disconnect it from the stand, which means that it, the stand won't ring. And Because if you've ever stood near a drummer smashing a drum kit, uh, you might realize that every part of the drum kit resonates. Mm-hmm. And let's say I'm smashing away on a heavy crash cymbal. Some of that is transmitting through the stand, and that in turn is transmitting through the other drums. Mm -hmm. the more we can disconnect that without overly damping each symbol, the Mm -hmm. more chance we have of getting a more isolated sound. I mean, it's it's never going to be perfect, but the more we Mm -hmm. can do, the better, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, one of my uh, ultimate goals is to get uh, a drum kit in the studio from a company called... I think they were called... wasn't Trick Drums. Uh, I've got to find them now, because it was... Aluminium drums from Italy. What was the company called? Uh, it's going to drive me mad. But uh, Mike Malian from Monuments has a kit from these guys. Right. And it's all aluminium. The toms, the kick, all made out of aluminium. And they sound incredible. Mm-hmm. It's hard to describe. Uh, there's, the word I would use is pure. Hmm. Like it, they they sound like you know a lot of drums. You've got to do a lot of EQ work to get rid of horrible kind of wong sounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, the these toms, you just hit them in real life, and they just go do do do, just with a pure note. And you're just like, ooh, 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 get a microphone on that, and I'm done. And that's literally what they did. The new album when that comes out, the new Monuments album, there are no samples on the toms or the kick. All oh, right. Huh. Uh, Billy says Rufus from the Darkness uh, uses symbols with holes in. Yeah, ozone. Uh, they are a, a similar idea, the ozone style symbols, except that that also massively changes the sound because it it not only makes the symbols lighter overall, which makes them sound higher, but also because the sound waves can't travel up and down and up and down the symbol so much, they stop a lot quicker. So. A lot of like gospel drummers that uh, do this, I've seen them do that because these cymbals then they go Psh, and they stop pretty quickly, which means they get out of the way of the band. Which, if you're in the kind of band where you're not going to be 
you know, smacking away on the cymbal a lot, like a lot of rock guys might do to ride through the crash. That can be really useful because then that means you can hit those cymbals on the, the beats and on the accents and you're out of the way before anyone has chance to be upset with you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, very, very clever. Um, I would imagine that a lot of the darkness stuff, he's probably got at least one cymbal that doesn't have holes in so that when there is a part where they're going and just, you know, doing the big, long crash thing, he'll mm -hmm. have an option for that. But a lot of the time, yeah, he'll probably have those quick get out of the way sounds and those are what is it sabian that does ozone all the main brands do a variant but that's the one that i remember the trademark of because it it's catchy mm -hmm. mm. but yes that's a thing yeah I, I do wish i could remember the name of this company um yeah mike wasn't using an aluminium snare i remember that much he was using a more traditional snare style but mm -hmm. But his shells were, uh, yeah, a little, not even so much trade secret. They were just, yeah, uh, yeah, made out of aluminium. And I can't remember the name of the company. Might have been Trick, actually. No, it can't have been Trick. But it doesn't matter. It's by the by, I digress. <laughs> Uh, Gear Junkie says, learning a lot about drum compression and the IK Multimedia Neil Peart drums. The what now? Sorry, IK, IK Multimedia. Come on, man, spell. Uh, Neil Peart drums. When, when, what? Oh, so that's six, six years ago. How did I not know about this? <laughs> um... Yeah, I need to get a copy of that. Just because I'm one of the world's most ridiculous Rush fans. Um, I was talking to Cam Fleury, the, the drummer, last night about Rush. And it turns out I know quite a lot more about Rush than anyone really should. And, oh, really? Well, I've, I'm a super fan. Um, before I found out who Dream Theater were, for the first 18 years of my life, my life kind of revolved around Rush. Partly because my dad is a massive super fan as well, so I was brought up in a household where from year one, uh, that kind of stuff was on loop in the house all the time. And mm -hmm. so that's why it's absolutely no surprise that not only do I know and play a lot of their stuff, but when I have my hair down, I bear more than a passing resemblance in the way that I kind of present myself to Geddy Lee, the bass player, keyboard player, <laughs> singer of Rush. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons why I play bass and sing is that I have someone as a kind of a, a model to to look up to and go, well, if he can do it, then I can do it. Mm -hmm. He can do it better, but I can at least <laughs> do it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, uh, that's why I do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was also influenced by a lot of the other kind of key bass players like Flea, Jakob Astorius, all those kind of people. But Geddy Lee yeah. was kind of the one for me where it's funny because before I actually played bass at all, I had piano lessons as a kid. So I'm looking at this guy playing keyboards and then switching back to bass as I start playing. And I'm going, well, yeah, I could do that. And then yeah. realizing that there's no band in this country at that time that had any inclination to sound anything like a keyboard band because the 80s were long dead. So I went into the more kind of rock and metal stuff and only came back to that later. But hmm, there you go. Mm. Oh, three gigabytes of samples and loops all recorded and played by the man himself. So basically sounds like programmed drums then. <laughs> <laughs> One of the, the, the long-standing jokes about Neil Peart was that he had what he called Canadian swing, which is mm -hmm. to say he was like an absolute robot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, that's that's one of the projects <laughs> that's coming up. That's but, brilliant. Yeah, let's talk about what else is coming up on the channel because there is lots. Um, so... Anyone who's on Patreon will either already have or will soon have uh, some of the videos that I've got here. So we've just released the Victory Super Kraken video to the, the public. Uh, let's have a look. 
uh, what else have we got? Because I've got my uh, uh, list up here, which I probably can't. Yeah, can't even show you the back of it these days. Um, so I've done my Linkin Park cover, leave out all the rest. But I am going to re-record the vocal. I've decided before that gets released. Uh, mm-hmm. Not that the original was particularly bad. It sounds good, but it was mm-hmm. a one take, and I can hear that. If you know what I mean, I I can hear that there are some really pitchy bits that even Melodyne, you're listening through and you're going, oh, buddy. But that Mm. was recorded for a purpose. It was recorded for a video to demo a piece of gear. And Mm -hmm. for those videos, that's fine. But I think with this now being a separate cover video, I want it to be as good as it can possibly be because it's going to be kind of a tribute to Chester and Linkin Park if, if it goes out to people who don't know me and us and the channel. Mm-hmm. So I, I want it to be as good as it can be. So next time I'm in the studio and let's say in good health, um, that's something I'm going to do is do several takes of the vocal and comp them and edit that together. Mm. But the rest of the track is done and I'm happy with it. So that's just... It's not even a. It's not me even going like, oh, I'm terrible. It's like objectively, I could put that out tomorrow, but there are things I'm listening to and trying to have the perspective of a new listener, and I'm going, uh, hmm, mm. that sounds like pitch correction. That sounds mm. like pitch correction, if you know what I mean. When it's kind of yeah, it's yeah. it's been shoehorned in, so, yeah. And because I only had a single take, I couldn't even go for an alternate take or anything. The The other takes that I had were all using either different microphones or different capsules, different settings, because that was the point of what I was doing. So they're not interchangeable. Mm-hmm. Ah, well. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Red 7, the Leviathan amp. That's coming out uh, very soon. If that's not already on Patreon, that will be at the end of tonight. Uh what else? Uh, the HX Stomp from Line 6. I filmed and edited my video on that today. I am really impressed with this thing. Really impressed. Yeah? Yeah. It turns out it's a full like USB interface as well. And it's like an 8-channel interface where you can get your entire tone and you can put something in the patch to get a copy of the sound at that point as well. And you get a clean DI. Mm-hmm. separately all at once multi-tracked and it's low latency and it sounds really good uh there are a couple of things i would change about it but i think that's fair to be said about most things mm-hmm. uh, but that's not a general negative it's a really impressive piece of gear for what you can do with it, you can use it as a, oops, sorry about that everybody uh you can use it as like a midi controller to control other things when you change presets it'll change or you can have it controlled by midi remotely there's so much you can do with it. It's bananas. So, yeah, I do a 20-something minute video going into some depth, but I could mm-hmm. talk for hours about it, and I probably will at some point. Um, Submission Audio have a new uh, compressor plugin called Double Tap. Uh, that's been edited and is going out very soon. And mm-hmm. the Double Tap plugin, you put it on your bass, and suddenly your low end's just solid. <laughs> Sold. It's got t- two big knobs, low end and all compression, and you just turn them up <laughs> until it's done. And it's really impressive, actually. <laughs> mm. That got used on the Kraken video that went out this week, and the low end, if you listen to that on a system or headphones, the low end is just solid. Mm-hmm. And I just, yeah, I could have spent hours with compressors and then multi band this and super technical that. And I can do that because I'm a nerd. But if I put this plug in on and I just go, crank, done. Mm -hmm. If I can do that, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because as much as I know that I can do it in a super technical way, why would I bother spending five minutes on something I can spend 10 seconds on? (laughs) You know? Yeah. Marty says, finally, I'm a Helix believer. I mean, yes, there are caveats, but what this can do is super powerful. And I still think there's something missing in Helix native. I don't know why. But what this does is maybe it's because this has the inputs that are tuned perfectly to interface with the rest of it or something. Don't know. But it's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I made one base preset today. Just one. But because of this thing called snapshots, I could use the same preset and make it sound clean, 
gritty or massive with a whole like massive chorus and flange and stuff on it without mm-hmm. changing presets. That's impressive. Legit? Yes, super legit. And because it costs a lot, lot less than the actual like Helix, which mm-hmm. is, you know, can do the same things and so much more. But for, as a bass player, I don't necessarily need so much more. I just need the thing and it does the thing. So there you go. That's that's why it's really impressive. Uh, so uh, what's the other one that's coming up? Yes, yeah, so the HX Stomp version. Yeah, that's it. Um, the Sennheiser, that's gone. I'm looking at my list. So far, I think that's everything I've got because any of the plans that I had have been halted because of the thing that has had me housebound this week. Mm-hmm. But that's still plenty to be getting on with and that's all going to be out for the patrons on Patreon uh, tonight. As soon as Ooh. we finish this podcast. Like it, like it. Mm. So yes, um, it's going to be a busy few weeks. Um, what have I got going on? Um, in just over a week, I'm going to be an extra in a music video for a change rather than being the cameraman. Uh, Monuments are uh, doing their new music video for the new single. And yeah, I'm going to be in a suit and tie and getting covered covered with blood. It's going to be fun. Sounds good. Yeah, but it's going to be nice to be just an extra rather than Mm -hmm. (laughs) running an 18-foot crane or something. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah... uh, Oh, this that's that's one of many 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 things uh i'm going to be at the british boutique guitar builders festival on the weekend the first weekend in february so that's that's just been announced mm-hmm. boutique which is a bit like 42 gear street but is uh in the uk only and mm-hmm. It's uh, Mike from CGS is the organizer of that, so it's a small affair. It's going to be four or five of us rather than the 12 or 13 at Gear Street. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of jams, probably have a few beers, uh, mm. and we'll be doing six pieces of equipment per day for three days, so that's lots. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be taking my camera equipment down and running a second room. So... Yeah, I've got some technical hurdles to talk to Mike about and get that all working. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the ideas for that are all falling into place. Mm. Yes, there's there's just lots and lots of stuff that is in the pipeline. Mm. And so some of it can be announced, some of it not yet. But 2022 looks like it's shaping up to, to be a busy year. Awesome. Yes. And I'm very excited to share it all with you. But Mm -hmm. for now, that is all I can say. So until next time. Need to know more. How can you do this to us? Yes. (laughs) To learn more, go to us. When you say say, until next time, next time you're still not going to tell anyone anything either, are you? Well, I might be able to tell more. (laughs) Tune in next week to find out. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> not to find out more just to find out if i can tell you anything else yeah i <laughs> said uh, standing order every week tune in on the podcast 8 p.m ish um every thursday uh, uk time and join us and celebrate being a nerd and doing stuff with this and join us again there uh, in between now and then, there's at least one more video coming out. Hopefully, I'll f- be able to find the time as well to do another live mix stream because last week I did uh, a live mix of that Linkin Park cover and very much enjoyed it. And we got very good feedback. So thank you, everybody, for that. And yeah, I'm going to get back on back on the horse, so to speak, with mixing. So yeah, there's going to be more of that. New year, new me. No, not really new me, but more time to mix. So that's what I'm going to do. So thank you everybody for tuning in and it's been a pleasure. We will see you all same time next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Goodbye. The North remembers. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still from Game of Thrones, aren't I? Yeah, but I'm from the North and I forgot. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> see you later, everybody. Yeah. Hey, everyone. That might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. 
We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hop Pole Studios. See you there.